Okay, so yesterday got the hives and uh, the, the nuke boxes and um, uh, set them up on the hive stands next to the hives. Um, and it was cold and windy yesterday, but it is sunny and still and Oh, probably close to 60 if it's not already in the 60s. So really beautiful, nice day today. Um, so we're going to put them in the boxes. I'm going to open these nuke boxes for the first time and we'll see how they look. One of them, uh, the one with the yellow top is really loud, which is not making me feel nice. Uh, but we'll see what's in it when we open it. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to do the purple top one first just because the other one sounds really loud and uh, this one sounds kind of nice. So I'm gonna try them first. Um, I do have my smoker going and I'm just gonna give them a little whiff. And each side. And give them a second to sit with themselves. Thanks up and ready to go there we go so i've got drawn comb for all of these um there's uh at least a couple that have a bit of honey on them and there's one frame and i can put it all the way over here that's just about full of capped honey um and it's older stuff but they will be fine with it um i wasn't sure if my um if my technique was going to work out. I thought it was going to end up full of bugs, uh, but it worked out good. I opened them up this year and they were fine. It's been three years they've been sitting in my garage. So uh, yeah, it was like the day I put them away. So scooch them out just a little bit. They're going to start out as soon as I pop those. Hmm. I'll, I'll show you right after I open them. I'm not going to be able to film and do that. Okay, so they look like a nice strong box. They are absolutely covered with bees. The lid was all covered with bees and they are good, nice and full. I haven't taken any of these frames out yet. There are five frames. That's awesome. Uh, so that'll fit in here. And of course, like anything in beekeeping, it didn't go 100% because as soon as I cracked that lid open, the wind picked up. So they all kind of bounced off my head for a few minutes there while they were pissy. But they've calmed down again. Ooh, there's a... Is that on camera? There's a big fat drone sitting there. There he is. Start moving some frames and see how it goes. Okay, so I've got uh, oops, four out of five frames moved over. They have, uh, let me see, the first frame is all stores, um, and the other three frames that I've moved so far all have brood on them. Uh, two of the three have eggs on them, so um, in a in a really good pattern. So happy with that they are looking good and they are going to just take right off i do believe um with as windy as it has been on them it kind of died down for a second but each time i pull a frame out it seems to get windy again uh they don't seem to be too bothered which is very nice so yeah once i get these guys in here um, I'll kind of leave the other frames out, I think, and then I'm going to whack that lid on there and uh, get the rest of them into the hole, and then I'll stick the other two frames in, close her up, call it a day with this one. Uh, I do have my entrance reducer on the front on the smallest one. I'm thinking maybe to open that up a little bit, but I'll probably wait until the first inspection to do that. We'll see how they're doing. I think I'd probably use more entrance than that, to be honest. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I might just change that now to the bigger one. I don't think they're, I wanna leave them fully open just yet. They're a good strong hive though, so they'd, they'd probably be all right. There we are, so they're all transferred over. Um, I didn't see the queen the whole time I was transferring stuff, but that's okay. I'm not too incredibly worried about it. 
Um, I really hope that she made it in the box. There's a ton that are in the air and covering the other box now. So really hoping that she is. But before I open that other box, I might just watch them for a minute and see what they do. And kind of watch the entrance here and see what they do down here. But um, I did flip it over to the bigger side of the entrance reducer. Um, and we'll see how that goes. That, they'll be fine with it. They're definitely strong enough for that. And it wouldn't surprise me if um, in a week I've got to add another box to them. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. These guys are these guys are really pretty strong and doing good. So that was that was a good nuke box. I'm happy with that. And like I said, plenty of eggs. Hopefully didn't squish the queen or lose her on the ground somewhere or something. But I didn't see her the whole time. So uh, I guess we'll find out next inspection. <laughs> So this is nice to see. All the bees that were in the air um, have either landed on top of that box, which is relatively normal, or they're all queuing up in the air. I don't know how well you can see that or not. They're all queuing up in the air in front of the entrance. And there's a bunch of bees sitting in front of the entrance with their nascent off land, waving in the air like they just don't care. Side, which is good that makes me feel good that makes me feel like we got the queen in there all set and she didn't fall off on the ground somewhere or whatever um, I didn't have uh, any big mishaps where I like dropped a frame on the ground or you know dropped the lid or something like that which was good I've been known to do that from time to time <laughs> I think it was the second time that I bought bees I went when I went to pick up the nukes um, it was a different place than I bought these from, um, and you transfer them into the hive there in their yard. Um, and, uh, I had my tie down veil on and apparently I didn't tie it quite tight enough. And I, I dropped a frame and, or dropped one side of it and it whacked the box and they all flew up off of it. And about two seconds flat, I had, oh, a couple dozen bees up in my hood, uh, up in my, up in my veil, which was not fun. I got a lot of stings and all over the face and stuff. It, it didn't feel good. I could just sit here and watch that all day. Anyways, okay. Let's get the other one in there. Got the fox all set to go. And, uh, right, so I'm going to crack this lid and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so these ones look about as strong as the other ones do. Um, which seems about right because they, they were both about the same weight. So, a handful of drones in each one, which is good. People get all worried about drones sometimes, but hives like to have a certain percentage at different times of the year. So later in the fall, you won't like to see any. Um, in the springtime, you'll see some. And it's not a big deal. It doesn't necessarily mean they want to swarm. They just want to have a certain percentage. Um, and it's a good thing because if every hive has a little drones, then when you have a queen that needs to mate, they might find one or 20. They're looking good. I, I can't film and do it. I'm sorry, guys. But there you go. I'm going to turn you off and get some frames in here. It's freaking windy again. It was beautiful all morning, and now it's windy. And yes, my dog comes with me. She doesn't bother him. She's only ever been stung once, and she leaves him alone. And the bees seem to leave her alone. Which is good. She loves coming. She's really, really old now. She'll be 14 this summer. Uh, she just loves hanging out. So that's Quinn, by the way, is her name. Okay, so these guys are all home, or these girls are all home. Not really well, didn't drop anybody or anything. Um, I did find the queen on this one. Um, she's a blue dot, which I believe was last year. I'm not 100%, but I believe that was 2020. I 
think blue is zero and five. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember what this year's color is, but I'm pretty sure last year was blue. Yep, so these guys are all home. Um, I haven't gone to the entrances quite yet, but I'll put the lid on them, and that'll probably help a lot. The entrance to the other one has gone bananas now, and let me take a look, see if they're squabbling and fighting. It doesn't look like it, but there's a bunch queued up in front to land. And I don't know if that's just because there's... Holy crap, I just saw one go in the entrance with full pollen bags. There's another one. That's crazy. I literally just put these guys in. Like, it's been, it's been maybe 10 minutes since I put the lid on this box. And they're already going in with full pollen bags. That is, that is bananas to me. Yep, there's another one. spot one and then spot it on the camera and zoom into it which might not work out oh, there's another one. Oh, shoot. see by the time I see them they're already in it doesn't look like there's any fighting at the entrance I was worried about the other colony all right I'll come back to this I, I probably ought to put the lid on this one uh, there we go <clears throat> there we go um, I didn't bother cleaning up these frames at all or monkeying with any of that. This one's got a big chunk of her comb on top that I'm going to have to take off before I put the lid on. But I didn't bother cleaning them up at all or doing any of that today. I just wanted to get them in. And then when I do further inspections, I can clean up. Um, oops. I can clean up better. Clean these frames up better. Early. There we go. Oh, I didn't film that either, I guess. I, uh, I brought some rubber bands out. Oop. Yeah, they're on top of this frame. The honeycomb that was in there broke when I was bringing it from uh, my house over to here. So I just banded it back into place. But that one's chucker block full of honey. So they've got decent stores. I wouldn't worry about locking them in, but I don't think there's any reason to brought marshmallows in case I thought different once I opened them for some reason or another. Oh, there we go, we settled down. Nice. Okay. Enjoy your day, girly girls. What am I saying? Enjoy your day. I'm going to sit here and watch these entrances until my wife calls me, probably. That's how that's going to work. Especially that one over there. That one's going crazy. I bet these ones are going to start doing orientation flights and stuff soon. I haven't been looking up at all yet. Uh, but yeah, they're doing all kinds of orientation flights out of this other hive. So I bet they'll start that soon with both of them. Very active. I bet this is the nicest day they've seen in a while. Um, tons of brood in, uh, well, actually probably less capped brood in, in this colony, um, but had a ton of eggs. Like everything that had hatched out was solid with eggs, solid. So that is really encouraging i think i got two very good queens out of this one just given the laying pattern i saw in in that one as well i think it's going to be great all right so this entrance is absolutely just busier than busy and they don't seem to be fighting or squabbling there's a, at least a handful with their Nasanoff plans in the air. And 
and they're doing orientation flights above. They're flying straight up in circles. Um, I would try to video, but you're not going to see them probably. Yeah, they're, they're doing their orientation flights and doing their things. Um, the other entrance is starting to get busier. So that's good. I couldn't believe that I saw bees with full pollen baskets coming in here. It was like 10 minutes. It was seriously like 10 minutes after I put the cover back on the box. See if I could see another one. It looks like they're doing some cleanup. I saw one bring out. Looks like a severed bee head. Ooh, yeah, there was one. They're so quick. When they land, they're immediately right in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see them do it. Here, I think I'm going to get on the other side so the sun's behind me. It might be better video. Oh, there's one right there. Uh, might have missed her. On the video. Full, full pollen baskets is crazy. I've been in here a few minutes, probably 15 minutes now. So both of them have entrance reducers on and they're on the bigger, they're on the bigger setting. Film these guys for a minute. They're getting busier. There's a bunch hanging out in the air here in front. Um, so yeah, I think the next thing to do, oh, there was one with full pollen baskets too. I'm not 100% sure what they're grabbing. Um, there's a bunch of trees and stuff that are starting to pop out. Um, I don't know, the maple pollen might be gone by by now. Not 100%. It's probably still hanging out on the trees and stuff. They can get it, but... Yeah, there's like zero dandelions around here. Anything, you know, normal like that. <laughs> yeah, they're all doing cleansing flights. I'd set my phone down there for a little while and um, put the glass up. Yeah, that and wipe it all down. <laughs> There's a bunch of bee poop all over it. Some bees crawling on it. Yeah, so hopefully they'll like it this spot. Uh, yep, so they've got all this hay field there, and we're in Vermont. Um, so if my brother actually cuts this on time when he's supposed to, <laughs> it's more so if it's not wet enough that you can't get out on it. Um, but if all this gets cut on time, um, all of this here, everything you see that's green grows back to clover and flowers. Um, yeah, so that's like June or like last week of May even. Depending on what he's trying to get off for hay. But, yeah, and then where there actually are here, um, kind of grows up to scrub. We, brush hog it a little bit, keep it mowed. Um, but this was, uh, we used that barn for pigs.
was the last thing we used it for. And then this was their, their pasture out here for the pigs. Um, um, somebody was asking me about water source for them and there's a brook that goes around them. So this scrubby hedgerow looking stuff here kind of follows the brook and it goes right out that direction and up. Yep, so there's their brook. They should have as much water as they want to drink. And here's the brook and the hives are right there. So they're all set. The only thing else I want to do with them right off, um, I'm thinking that the timbers might be a little close together front and the back of the bottom board don't touch. I mean, it, it, it's fine, but uh, I just don't want it to get tippy when I'm picking boxes of honey off them or something. You know, once they get pretty heavy, that might be an issue. So I just grab another cinder block and throw it in front and move the timbers over. Um, these guys are leveled um, this direction. And there's a little bit of slope towards the front. Not much, but a little bit enough. Um, I did want them really pretty level because I do a lot of uh, foundationless and let them build their own stuff. Um, the one thing I thought about these bees, maybe it's just because I haven't had bees for three years. Um, actually, not so much this box but that box over there the the bees themselves looked awful small maybe that's just because i haven't had them in a while but they look smaller than i remember having them <laughs> so um but that is one thing i noticed when i started doing foundationless before um is the bees got a little bit smaller which is fine that's the comb they drew so that's the size they wanted to be and I was cool with that so my goal I think with the bees this this go around my long-term goal um, I think is going to be to sell nukes eventually that's not going to be anytime soon um, but in the next oh 10 years probably I'd like to have my own bee, bre bee breeding program and, and sell some bees um, and the goal would be to uh, produce a bee that lives <laughs> through the winter um, the, the two biggest problems that I've had here um, have been the harsh winters and varroa uh, varroa mites um, so I want to have bees that, uh, keep themselves clean for the most part. And this isn't new by any means. There's, there's bees that do that already. Um, the, the Buckfast bees and Russian bees, and I forget the name of the lab off the top of my head, but they bred a, a very clean bee. They have a special name. I, I forget what it is. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe doing some crossbreeding of stuff and coming up with something that lives in Vermont very well for our winters and also is fairly clean. Um, and the goal I think would be to have 15% or less losses uh, with no treatment. So uh, um, I think people get a little too concerned with their treatments and not doing treatments and being organic and all of that before they get to a place where they can have those acceptable losses. Um, I think, you know, if we shook bees and had mites that were, you know, of a level that we wanted to treat and didn't treat them, they would probably die. That's what's gonna happen. So, um, my goal, I think, to get to a place where I can have a decent beer breeding program to do that um, is to have enough hives that I don't care if some of them die. That's kind of where you gotta get to. Uh, 
and and have you know 40 percent losses be acceptable for a little while until your genetics catch up with um catch up with the demand that's on them um the only way you weed out the bad hives is to weed them out you know people do the same thing with cows and cow breeding programs if they have a cow that doesn't produce any milk well you might not want to breed her um <laughs> or if there's uh, more so the daughters of the bulls if the daughters of the bulls don't um, don't produce a lot of milk then we don't use that bull anymore that kind of thing that's very very general description uh, but same thing with bees or with anything else that's alive um, you know the natural selection thing takes care of a lot of it for you uh, but right now with two hives pretty much going to do what I need to do to keep them alive and then grow and then the more you have the the more your diverse your genetics can become um, uh, I'll have to get some queens from other places and things like that to, to boost that. Um, I have one neighbor, I think, who has bees close enough that, the, that they might be in the breeding spectrum. Breeding spectrum? What the hell does that mean? Uh, the, oh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. The drone collective areas, or so something along those lines. Um, but they're within a few miles. They're within, oh, they're within two miles, I think. Maybe less than that. They didn't have bees before when I had bees, so wasn't I wasn't worried about it. We didn't have anybody close by that had bees, um, which is natural bees. Um, when I was keeping before, and um, yeah. So I'll probably go over and talk to them. I, I don't even know who has their hives. Um, it's not, my neighbor's not the one who actually owns the bees. He, he had somebody put some hives on his property, but I don't know who it is. So I'll figure that out probably and, and just talk to them to see what, what kind of beekeeper they are, what they like doing, or if they're even gonna keep doing it, who knows? They might've started and, and don't like it or something.